I admit this video is late. I think this is the hardest video of all the year-end videos to make every year because today we're looking at the biggest non-singles or sometimes singles that didn't hit and album deep cuts. Basically my 20 favorite country songs of the year that weren't like big mainstream hits. Also look, that grate is clean everybody. I'd like you to all acknowledge that that grate is clean, okay? Also, someone asked where the wolf was. He's behind my head. I'm sorry. This is just where I've been sitting. And now his original uh, paint ship art brother, the bear, is back from Virginia. I went back home for Christmas and New Year's and brought back a lot of the rest of my stuff from Virginia, so... I'm really pretty much fully in Nashville now. That's why there was a delay between this and the others is I kind of had to do one more half move, but I'm here now and I'm ready to look at my favorite songs of the year. I've got this list at 20 and I'm gonna move pretty quickly through them. I'm trying to do a mix of like some more mainstream stuff, some more indie stuff. So whatever kind of fan you are, there should be something for you here. At 20 is Ian Munsick's Barn Burn. Well, the neighbor called the sheriff and the sheriff called the station by the time they got there. This song made me laugh really hard because you have an unreliable narrator in it and he probably burned down his ex's house, but you know, he's not owning up to it. He's like, why would you assume that just cause she broke my heart and her barn burned down that I had anything to do with it? On top of that, it's got this awesome fiddly, bluegrassy breakdown in the back half of the song. I got me a pocket full of matches. That is so, so catchy and fun. Number 19 is Dylan Gossett's Cole. I've seen heaven without dying, met the devil without trying. As acoustic country TikTok jams go, Cole is one of the best. And it has a very simple but provocative hook. If pressure makes diamonds, why the hell am I still Cole? You just have a young man wondering, look, if I have all of this weighing on me, why don't I feel resilient and strong? I feel like a lump of coal. Melodically and lyrically, I think this song just works. And the song was huge on social media, translated into giant streams, and now he's the first artist on Miranda Lambert's new Big Loud Texas label. And number 18 is Riley Green's Working On Me. Well, it's working on me, it's pulling me in. If you saw my Riley Green review, you know I was kind of like, eh on the album. I liked it, I found it pleasant, but not really saying all that much. But my favorite song from that record, and the one I've come back to a ton, is this one, Working On Me, which isn't just a checklist of Southernisms. It's flirtatious and breezy, even a little beachy for Riley Green. Admitting that all these ways this girl communicates or styles herself are just working on him, and he's drawn to her. It's conversational and flirtatious in a way that Riley Green songs often aren't. Number 17 is Fly On The Wall by Lauren Watkins and Jake Worthington. I wanna be a fly. This song really snuck up on me in the back half of last year. It is a song about jealousy, where she just wants to watch and be a fly on the wall. It's like a tiny bit creepy, but it's also because she's in love. It kind of falls into similar territory as Girl Crush there. But the entry into the chorus, that melody of I wanna be, and you kind of get that delayed drop, is super effective. Her and Jake sound awesome together. And between that and her song Shirley Temple and a few others, like I'm keeping an eye on what Lauren is doing this next year. My number 16 is Paul Revere by Noah Kahn. Y'all gonna have the debate if Noah is country or not. He's somewhere between country, alt, folk, pop, indie rock. Who knows? I love it. I love his music. Stick Season and the Deluxe are just like pretty much perfect albums. But of the new tracks that released in 2023, Paul Revere is definitely the most country of them and it's totally my favorite. It's the sleeper there. And that low tenor guitar, mm. What could be a more New England way of saying, I wanna get out of this town than saying, I'm gonna ride like Paul Revere out of here. My number 15 is Used To by Caleb Lee Hutchinson. As I used to, girl, I'm used to. With a throbbing bass and kind of spacey atmosphere and then kind of a disco inspired tambourine beat, Used To is sonically one of the coolest songs I heard this year, but I think the writing is awesome too. Get used to getting used to. Like, you used me, now I'm gonna use you. Caleb's super classic country voice and that kind of galloping beat that the guitar gives you in the beginning, really when juxtaposed against all of that production, is just one of the coolest vibes. Nailed it. At number 14 is I'm In Love by Haley Witters. Talking about who, who I'm out of my mind, two bottles 
If you liked everything she ain't, and y'all know I did, and I loved Raised, I promise you will love I'm in Love. It's got that same kind of throwback, fun, country energy that'll take you back to the 90s. And she is describing an idealized Southern world where everything is just how it should be. The stars are where they should be in the sky. The deers are in rut. I had to Google that, I'm not gonna lie. Well, what does it mean if deers are in rut? It means they're horny. Um, and similarly, Haley is in love. But man, this song just has fun. The same way the little hand claps made everything she ain't. This one's got, ooh, ooh, I'm out of my mind. And it's so fun to sing along to. Number 13 is Hungover and Heartbroken by Cade Hoffman. Now I'm hungover and heartbroken. Kate Hoffman is a young guy from Colorado that put out his first music in 2023 and this song I was addicted to this song in the first half of last year It's like a more pleasant pretty version of what Coulter Wall does Like if you took Coulter's kind of cowboy song vibe and mixed it almost with a little bit of maybe Jim Croce I feel like you would end up with Kate Hoffman and this is just a very plain folksy little song about being hungover and heartbroken but really it's Cade's voice against an acoustic guitar that sells it all. And I believe he is now actually signed to Coulter Wall's same record label, La Honda. So good for him. Number 12 is Bigger Houses by Dan and Shay. I think this new Dan and Shay record is the best thing that they have ever done. People are really dug in being like, I hate Dan and Shay. And I get that, okay? I did too for like a full decade. But this new album is really good. And this song, Bigger Houses, was immediately my favorite one on it. There's no drum on the whole track. And it feels almost like a big brother to one of their earlier songs from the ground up. In that song, they were imagining, man, I want to build a life with you and build a house. And on this one, they're like, you know what, all the bigger houses and having more stuff and status, it doesn't actually make a better life. And it has an awesome melody in the chorus, especially when they do this walk up where they go, if what you got still not enough. The harmonies sound awesome, it is not overproduced, and I just think it's a stellar track, and I think even Danny Shea Cynics might like it. My number 11 is Girl in the Mirror by Meg Maroney. She looks just like me, but I don't recognize her. If you saw my albums video, you know Lucky was one of my favorite albums of the year. And while that album has a ton of fun songs and kind of sly, funny songs, the sad moments hit too. And on Girl in the Mirror, Meg Maroney is looking at herself and not even recognizing why she doesn't care about the girl in the mirror. She's like, I cared about the boy more than I cared about her. And something about her kind of raspier vocal and having this sort of depressed reflection looking at her own life just makes for a quite compelling, beautiful little song. All right, let's get into the top 10 and we're starting off with Cody Johnson's Dirt Cheap. You can't buy that kind of dirt. The second I listened to Cody Johnson's Leather, I knew that this was going to be one of the runaway kind of standout audience faves of the album. And that has certainly come true. I think it's going to be his next single. They're still working on The Painter, but all of the momentum is behind this song, Dirt Cheap. And it is a good version of a comma song because the whole premise of the song is that you can't buy this dirt cheap because he's looking at his land. Someone might think it's dirt cheap, but he is seeing all of these memories that he has here. That's where my daughter was swinging. And he's like, I can't just sell this land. I care about this place. And it's part of me and my memories. It's a solo ride by a guy named Josh Phillips. It's stunning. Cody Johnson has the perfect voice to deliver such a sincere song like this. And it was definitely one of my favorites off of Leather. I was debating on this list between that and Watching My Old Flame. My number nine song is Marigold by Gabe Lee. Time to time we all lose something. But it ain't worth nothing to me. I was in the midst of a very chaotic move when Gabe Lee's Drink the River came out, and I just didn't sit with that album as long as I have with Gabe's other albums, because y'all that have been here know he's one of my very favorite artists. But the title track of that and this song, Marigold, have been standouts to me from the second I heard them. Oh, and also apparently they're standouts to Obama, who put them on his like things I'm definitely really listening to list that he does every year, but it's still cool and a great look for Gabe. But this song Marigold has Gabe as a narrator thinking about how his wife is gone, except she's not gone yet. She has cancer. And so it's this weird feeling of having lost her, but she's not actually departed yet. And it feels kind of like misty and like Gabe's looking over a river or something in the production. It's really haunting and beautiful. And Gabe's voice sells any kind of folk anthem like that so well. My number eight is Cat in the Rain by Turnpike Troubadours. You can try to put the past behind its own 
reaction to my albums list, I would say I have gotten the most responses about why didn't you include Turnpike Troubadour's new album? And that has surprised me because I feel like this album is very divisive. I feel like 50% of people are like, no, this is the best thing they've ever done. And 50% of people were like, eh, I was kind of let down by the comeback. I'm probably a little bit more on that side, but I loved the title track of Cat in the Rain. And this is a song that was extremely challenging for me to interpret. I think it's told all out of order, like Memento. I think some parts of it are about Evan Felker in rehab. I think the second verse of it is reflecting on his tryst with Miranda Lambert. I think the first verse of it is maybe him reuniting after the tryst with Miranda Lambert with his wife and getting forgiven. And then he, you know, it's weird, but it gave me so much to chew on. And I don't mind kind of analyzing a song like that. I think if nothing else, what I take away from it is Evan sort of reflecting on his non-sober periods as being this sort of sad cat out in the rain and his wife taking mercy on him, bringing him in from the storm that he caused. My number seven is Radio Song by Hardy featuring Jeremy McKinnon. I tend to either like really sad or really funny songs. And that is what Radio Song delivers in spades. I still see people misunderstanding this track, but this is a brilliant song on Mockingbird and the Crow in which Hardy is saying, look, I could write you a radio song. And it's got the super poppy bro country chorus of like, baby, what you say we go get up out of here. But he flips it in the last line and says, but this ain't no radio song. And that's when you get the kind of, whatever type of metal a day to remember does, you get Jeremy McKinnon screaming the F word over and over again. And you get Hardy being like, this ain't no radio song. And the point is he is breaking this mold of what he knows he can be. That side of him he calls the Mockingbird, and this is the crow letting itself out. And it's meant to be irreverent. It is meant to kind of poke at the idea that you can't actually say anything on country radio. And so it makes its point, and it's pretty freaking funny and shocking while doing it. And if the goal was to create a reaction, it is one of the most memorable songs I heard this whole year. At number six is May Estes with Thinking About Cheap. <laughs> If this song came out in 2022, don't get mad at me. It was put out on EP also in 2023, but it is one of the most stunning, interesting songs I heard this year. Vibe-wise, it reminds me of a classic Leanne Womack track. Super country, super steel-filled and kind of moody. In the song, May sits down her husband and needs to have a serious conversation with him and says, look, I haven't done anything wrong, but I've been thinking about cheating. I find that thought crossing my mind of like wondering what it would be like. And she's trying to elicit his reaction. Like, do you care? Would that bother you? And the song's interesting because obviously no wrongdoing has been done, but you are both getting this woman confessing, so that's interesting, but also clearly there's something wrong in the relationship. So it's a touch of an indictment and a test for him. And it leaves you as a listener to make up why that might be happening. I don't think I've heard a song quite like it and it's so layered with meaning in that way. At number five is Ticking by Zach Bryan. It's time ticking on the inner Conventional wisdom would say the best songs that Zach released this year were I Remember Everything or Hey Driver or Tourniquet, and they're all great. But I'm going with Ticking because of two reasons. One, I love how he says ticking. It's such a bizarre vocal delivery to just say ticking so aggressively that it stands out. And also the, the opposite almost is when he's entering the chorus and it just sort of swells from nothing. It's so unaggressive. There's wheels, like he just kind of says wheels. There's wheels running going on the interstate, but you, the way he just sort of builds into it, you're like, oh, I'm leaving a forest into some sunny meadow. One thing you can never accuse Zach Bryan of being bad at is dynamics. And then just the song overall is a beautiful song about wanting to be back home with his lover and off the road, which is funny because so many of his other songs are about wanting to be on the road, but he's a restless soul. My number four is Who's Lying Here by Parker Gray. Who's Parker is an artist that was new to me this year. I hadn't listened to her music before, but this song, this song's been sticking with me where she 
questions that something is wrong in her relationship. She likes the way this guy's hand feels in her hair and she's sitting across him at dinner, but someone's lying. And that's what the whole course is. Who's lying here? Because we know this isn't good, but we're kind of playing a part. And it is almost like a country mystery novel a little bit in its vibe. Like the way that the chorus flows, where she's like, who's lying? And she does kind of all these little movements like that. It's like really winsome and pretty, but also kind of suspicious and sad. And I just think it's a great track overall. And number three is Orange Bottles by Wyatt Flores. Yeah, what am I chasing? Life Lessons was one of my favorite albums this year. In fact, it was my number five album of the whole year. And this song, Orange Bottles, opens the whole thing in stunning fashion. In it, Wyatt looks around him and just sees orange bottles and white pills sitting beside him. And he's been living hard and drinking too much as well. And in the chorus, he's just asking, what am I doing? Who have I become? Am I proud of this man that I am acting like? And the song is a wake up call to his own self, but it's punctuated by the coolest percussion. Big timpani booms all throughout it where he's kind of saying, what am I doing? <laughs> Who have I become? It's like, boom, 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 boom. And like the musicality on that album is so cool. And normally I hate too much percussion, but somehow this is like big bombs in the background. It's not like way up in the front of the mix. It's like big and loud, but not taking over the song is so cool. Yes, I just made half my review of this song about the timpani, but I really like it, okay? You've heard me talk about how good Wyatt's voice is. You know it. At number two is Charles Wesley Godwin with Family Ties. Strike me down. I almost just called the song Strike Me Down while recording because that's obviously the super immediately popular refrain from it. And if you've seen Charles Wesley Godwin live, you've gotten to be there in the crowd as everyone sings, strike me down. And he's asking to get struck down if he ever cuts his family ties. And that is the most Charles Wesley Godwin thesis statement ever. He's like, I'm proud of those that came before me, the miners out in West Virginia. I love this family in front of me right now and I will be loyal to them. This song's also cool because of that little quick piano entry and then immediately into Charles's vocal, but also the pre-chorus. Like I'm obsessed with the pre-chorus of the song because so many songs don't even bother with the pre-chorus. And that whole part where he's like, they're calling me from way back where and you get this little like, ooh, what's about to happen before hitting really hard. It's just the perfect song to me. The second I heard it, I was like, that's melodic, that's beautiful, the sentiments are amazing, and it's so fun to sing. Before this number one, I guess I should mention the other things written on my list. I didn't even do honorable mentions for this video, but I had Weight of Your World by Chris Stapleton, Where It's Blue by Luke Grimes, a Colton Venner right? Why am I doing this? There's like seriously 25 others, and they're all on that board too. Who else is here? Evan Honer. The Chattahoochees, there's too many songs. But my number one song out of everything I listened to this year is Till the End of My Days by Brennan Edwards. You drifted in my aura of sorrow that tried to hide behind a smile. Brennan Edwards is a guy from Virginia that is making some of the most perfect, like, sit around the campfire and think about life music that there is. He sings with a plain spoken clarity that I find remarkably compelling. His guitar work is incredible. And as a lyricist, he's so naturally excellent. Till the End of My Days to me almost feels like some sort of classic medievalish poem written in modern language. He describes this woman as drifting into his aura of sorrow that tried to hide behind a smile and promises to love her till the end of my days, till the world's washed away, till the moon and the sun do collide and once more with God we abide. And once more with God we abide. It really does remind me a little bit of like Lady May or Shake the Frost, like that kind of early, sweet, lovely Tyler Childers stuff. And I was just obsessed with this song the whole year. When I'm driving and my Spotify algorithm takes over, this is always the first thing it plays and I always listen all the way through. I think it's just a sweet, perfect little love song. It has stuck with me all year and I think big things are ahead for that guy. But yeah, that is my favorite 20 smaller country songs. Hopefully you discovered something here. I'm sure I missed some stuff that you love, but hey, I'm one dude, I can't get to everything. And that's it for the year end bests. Am I gonna do a worst? Stay tuned and find out if you're new here, check out my Spotify playlist, check out my merch. Uh, you can subscribe and I'm trying to get to 250,000 subscribers this year. That's my stated goal. So 
I'm gonna see if I can make that happen this year, but I'm excited for a great year on YouTube. Okay, y'all, love you and bye.